So, Rob McNeely here, and it's a real pleasure for me to be talking with my good friend Ben Furman in Helsinki, in Finland. Thank you. Thousands for... of kilometres away. <laughs> Thanks for being willing to find the time, Ben. You know, we're, we spent time with each other just a few weeks ago. Yeah. When you kindly invited me to, to Helsinki for a two-day workshop, which was, yeah. was lovely. Very, very nice workshop. And the feedback was excellent, too. Oh, that's good. And uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, the the stimulus for me to <clears throat> ask you from this interview was my concern about <clears throat> excuse me, my concern about the way therapy has lost the human approach to dealing with dilemmas and has gone down a medical model, a medical um, a way of treating conditions instead of with people. And, uh, you know, as a psychiatrist, you, you, you would know about the tendency for that to happen medically. And with your uh, innovative kids' skills approach, that seems to me to fit in just perfectly with the notion of healing rather than treating. Now, some people will know about Kid Skills and the workbook that you that you've created to go with that in all of those languages that it's been translated into. But some people might not know about it. Could you say something about just a few words about yourself and how come you're interested in this kind of work and something about Kid Skills then? That'd be okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm a, I'm a psychiatrist and my uh, let's say speciality is family therapy and uh, my subspeciality within family therapy is solution focused uh, therapy or solution focused approach and to put it briefly well, many years ago I was invited to be a supervisor for the staff of a kindergarten they worked with uh, special needs children so they only had a very small group like eight children and they asked me to um, help them develop some kind of an approach, some kind of a method that they could use with all their children. And um, I was delighted. And I said, this is exactly what I want to do. If, if we could succeed in developing a method that other kindergartens could use too, that could be used in schools, that could be used by professionals all over the world, that would make my dream come true. And so we set out to gather some good ideas that I knew that usually work, that are better than some other ideas. And we collected so many ideas, in the end we had like 15 ideas. And, uh, and those 15 ideas came together and it was then called, we gave it a name and we called it Kids Kids. And uh, so it's not so easy to explain because that's 15 ideas, but, but only a few of these ideas are actually Pivotal, and uh, that is the idea that uh, children don't have any problems. It's a misunderstanding. It's a total misunderstanding. Yeah. They never had any problems. They just had skills that they need to learn, and it's our uh, our job then to find out what skill they need to learn, how can yeah. we help them learn those skills. So it's a kind of a different way of thinking. It's it's actually not a method. It's a way of thinking. Yes. It's a way of speaking and also a way of being because that's a whole different starting point. You're assuming that children might encounter some difficulty, not because there's something wrong with them, because there's something, some skill that you're calling, some skill that they haven't learned. Yes, I think uh, this way of thinking is, of course, mainly inspired by Milton Erickson. I used to read Milton Erickson uh, a lot and I tried to figure out like what's the philosophy, what's the thinking behind mm. these uh, interventions and, and I, 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 apparently I came to the conclusion that uh, Milton Erickson was in, in some way like a teacher, like a, like a person who teaches you about how you can you know, deal with psychological problems by learning something, by learning to control your mind, by learning to think differently, by learning to behave differently, by learning to respond differently. So there was a kind of a learning uh, mindset. And this same uh, learning mindset we find now um, popular, very popular 
in the growth mindset idea that, um, that you know there is the idea of fixed mindset and and and, and growth mindset and uh, this kind of thinking i think there are many people who are thinking along similar lines yes and uh, this you 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 began this in finland and was, was top any part of this too or was this your baby no, I, I should say that this is like a, almost like Tapani's intervention because, uh, or the ideas very much came from Tapani because we were together with Tapani and I, uh, Tapani Ahola, my colleague, and, and yes. he had been working a lot with children. He was a supervisor for many small children, two or three year olds and and nurses who work with children, and special education teachers who work with children. So he was constantly helping people to work with children in a, in a creative, in a brief therapeutic manner, which meant that there was always some kind of a game or some kind of a playful approach that uh, would then uh, be helpful for the child. And, and you could see that the red threat that went through all his case stories was uh, again the Ericksonian idea that uh, you are not fixing a problem, yeah. you are helping the child to learn something that is difficult for them, to learn something that is difficult for the child, which means you don't have to blame the parents at all. And that's the bonus because if you don't blame the parents, they become your partners. And, and they become excited about it and they like you. And this is very different from many other approaches where, where you, you automatically blame the parents and you automatically start to teach the parents to become better parents for the child, to be uh, not such a fucked up family, to be more normal and so on. So you, you are normative and you're kind of trying to change the parents to become better parents. And that's, you, get, you get into a lot of shit by, by going in, in that direction. Yes, that normative, um, I mean, the child then is normal, the parents are normal, the, the, and the therapist is normal, and the, the, the child, uh, his job is to learn some skill, and the therapist's and the parent's job is to help the child learn some skill. I mean, that's revolutionary compared with the medical approach of fixing something. I think so too, and 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 uh, it's not mutually exclusive. Like if you concentrate on the child and helping the child learn the skill, then yeah. you don't have to be a genius to understand yeah. that this that everybody has to change. Because yeah. now the parents have a new role; they are helping the child to acquire a skill. And a helper, somebody who helps another person learn a skill, cannot criticize that person, cannot be mad at the person, cannot punish the person. So in fact, even if the child is learning a skill, you are, you are doing a bit of a revolution because you are not only changing the child. And sometimes people say, hey, these kids skills are, hey, these kids skills are, it's not about children, is it? You know, they are like uh, clear sighted. They can see that even if on the surface, children are learning skills, actually, it's a so-called systemic method. Systemic here means that you are influencing the interaction pattern. Yes. Uh, not only the child, but everybody around the child, because there's an interaction, there's a play yep. going on between the parents, the teachers, the child, and you're trying to change the, the name of the game that is going on. And, and these, the system includes the therapist. And the therapist then has the chance of being part of uh, learning and teaching and growing and expanding. And I love the, you, you pointed to this, I think, with that book, that lovely book that you wrote with Tapani, Pickpockets in, in the Nudist Column. I, I mean, know that title is so cute. But, and, you know, the principle that the therapist sew a pocket on someone and then pick it. And, you know, the medical approach creates a problem and then wants to fix it. And you're not doing that. You're doing something quite different, totally different. 
totally. I think it's just beautiful, Ben. And um, what, there are some other countries that have become interesting. You just, you're just back from China uh, last weekend. You were in China. Yes, and uh, Kids Kills is particularly popular in uh, Germany and in Holland because mm -hmm. when I there I'm like a celebrity sometimes I come and give a talk and there are lots of people and I'm like wow, <laughs> all these people and then no oh, no you are very well known in our country and then um, the method has somehow um, um, fertile I should use the word fertile ground in some countries the population or the, at least the, the people in the educational field they are already thinking along those lines, so it kind of fits them. Then there are other countries, like let's say China, where this is absolutely revolutionary, and it, it's like almost the opposite of what they have been yes. doing for years. So yeah. they may fond of this approach because it's so different from what they are used to. Yes, yes. But it was different, but it was well received from what, from what I understand. That they liked it. They could see it was useful. Yeah, in, in China, we get these kind of religious conversions where people come and say, oh, this has changed my life, my, my relationship, my husband has changed, my, my, it's totally different now with my child. I used to criticize my child all the time and I also criticize my husband all the time. Yeah. Now that I've learned kids, kids, my life has changed. I'm, I'm grateful to you for the rest of my life. <laughs> they are sometimes quite dramatic in yeah. how they... <laughs> this um, is actually quite simple, I think. Well, Ericsson said that uh, adults are just little people grown big. <laughs> I like to say kids, that. kids, girls, whenever we have a problem, I'll speak, speak, my, speak personally, whenever I have a problem, I'm, I'm behaving at a very young age. So I think uh, the kids' skills are very relevant, not only for people of a, of a, a small age, but... Uh, they're they're good for relevant for all of us. I think so too. I think so too. People uh, people hate to be told that they have a problem, yeah. but they don't mind being told that they have a skill to learn. Exactly, exactly. And that that that's one of my uh, what initiated me uh, wanting to have this conversation because I know a lot of people know about you and your work, but if there's something I can do to let more people know about it, well, that's that's, that would be my pleasure to do that. I like that, yes. Um, is there anything else that you think would be helpful for people to know about? Um, it's probably not worthwhile going into all of the minute steps that you are involved in, in uh, the kids' skills process. But would it be helpful to just make some comments about some of the steps that are involved? Would that be useful to think? I find that uh, of the 15 steps, only only actually one step is difficult for people. And mm -hmm. that's the figuring out what skill the child needs to learn if he has this or that problem. Okay. That is somehow mind bending or... Yes. They, 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 if, I, if, I, if they... If they, they know exactly what's the child's problem. And this child behaves in this way. He hits other children. Yes. Or, yeah. You know, that, or he doesn't do that, or he does all the time that. Or they complain about the child's behavior, and they know exactly what's wrong. Yes, yes, yes. I, I would typically then ask, like, okay, so what skill does your child need to learn? Yeah. And they go blank. Yeah. And they, I, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? And I thought it was a kind of a cute example. Oh, Beautiful. I have, I have many examples, but... But I thought that the, the nail biting is a good example because this also ties with Milton Erickson. The, the nail biting is like a bite and the child is biting his nails or her nails. And then you go like, okay, so what skill does he need to learn? And you go like, what, what do you mean? He stopped biting his nails. And then I would say something like, oh, you mean you would like him to learn to grow his nails? <laughs> they go like, Yes. Ah. <laughs> so there's a little shift from biting your nails to growing your nails. And see, it's much easier to get the child to grow their nails. And you can even do what Ericsson did. You could even do one finger at a time. So <laughs> that, 
then you get like small steps at the same time. So you grow, you grow, for example, the, 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 the nail of your thumb first and then you expand to other things. That's an Ericksonian idea. So, so that's another confirmation that I think that these ideas originally somehow, at least to me, come from the work of Milton Erickson. Yes. So that's difficult. And that's why I've created the app, Kids Skills app. Oh. And then you can download it, it's for free. And uh, you can download it for your iPhone or for your Android phone. And it will help you to think of a skill to learn if you know what the problem is. So if someone wanted to find out more about this, Ben, um, I, I'll put something there about your website, but um, could, you, could you just say what, how people could find out more about this? I've tried to put all the relevant information on the website called Kids Skills Org. Kids Skills Org. And Kids. there uh, you can see a video about it. You can hear, read about the different yeah. things that we have done. Okay. Well, that's just so beautiful, Ben. And, and thank you for taking the time to speak about this. And it's exactly what I was interested to emphasize how instead of treating something, someone, tr instead of treating a condition, you are showing a beautiful way of helping to work with a person and help them to be more of who they are, just by learning. That's so beautiful. Beautiful contribution. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for, the, for being willing to have this conversation, Ben. Thank you. <coughs>